Welcome back, all you erudite friends out there. Thanks for being here. I can't believe it's finally here. We're going to do the fifth foot of Anaman's five foot shelf. As you know, and if you've been following along in feet one through four, we've brought to you a lot of really great books that you need in your library. And if you'll recall, at the beginning of this, we talked about how Anaman's original intent was to provide books that people could buy that would take them from beginner or knowing basically nothing about magic to knowing everything they would really need to be successful in magic. Oh, and these books need to be readily available. If you haven't already, I recommend that you go back and watch feet one through four so that you'll kind of be up to speed on what we've talked about so far. The order of the different segments of the five foot shelf are not in any particular order. I've tried to space them out and make them interesting and it's taken me a while to come up with foot five. Of course, anecdotally, it's become harder and harder as we've progressed through each of the different segments because it's harder to decide which books are going to be put on that shelf. Without any further ado, let's get into foot five of Anaman's Five Foot Shelf of Magic Revisited by Erudite Magic. The first book to make the cut on the fifth foot of Five Foot Shelf of Magic is none other than Jamie D. Grant's The Approach. Now, I understand that this book is no longer available in print and as I've already indicated in other video segments of the Five Foot Shelf of Magic, I'm not afraid to go PDF if I think that the book itself is worth picking up. And in this case, this book is definitely worth acquiring in any format in which you can get it. If you don't already know, Jamie D. Grant is a Canadian magician based in the Vancouver, Canada area. He is a part-time professional. His day job is as a paramedic saving lives. He's also found a great niche market for himself as a strolling and party magician and has come up with a number of effects that he's released to the public. In addition to his blog, the Magic Friday blog, which I'll put a link to down below, he has published a book about how to become a strolling or party magician. This is not an inexpensive book. I want to say that it's 70 or $75. However, it is well worth the money because it is packed with information to take you from knowing just a little bit about magic to actually having your own business as a party magician. It's witty and engaging and he's chosen to write it with a variety of fonts and styles of fonts so that the book never loses your attention. It's a workbook so you're going to be filling in sections at the end of each chapter about your next steps. So he's getting you involved in the process of getting yourself ready to be a party magician. He covers everything in the book from what effects you need to perform, how many do you need, what's the best way to approach a group, things to do when the party's dying down, contracts, he gives you templates. This book literally has it all if you want to be a strolling magician. He even talks about fees, which I think that most people do not share enough information about that subject. Jamie gives you his fee structure and how you should price for your market. I can't recommend the book highly enough, and even though it's only available as a PDF, perhaps at some point again it will be published as a book, I understand why he would go to a PDF format because of the way that you're going to fill things in and be interacting with the book. It probably makes sense to just print those pages and write around those margins. So you're gonna wanna get this one. I think we're off to such a great start. I can't wait for the next few books. Many of you have probably been wondering when I went through some of the original feet, what about the classics like the Royal Road to Card Magic? Well, here it is finally on foot five. I think that the Royal Road to Card Magic definitely deserves a spot on your shelf. For me, this was my introduction to how to perform sleight of hand with cards and Although I later acquired the Card College series, I don't think that these two are at odds with each other. In fact, I think that they supplement each other. While the Royal Road to Card Magic is far more of an overview, and I think, frankly, you might be better suited to pick this up first. It's inexpensive, it's informative, it tells you everything you need to know for a lot of the basics. How to do an overhand shuffle control, how to riffle 
uh, shuffle cards and it walks you through all of the basics that you need to know to be performing some magic and it gives you the tricks that are following or go with each of those sets of slights. Now of course this was published a long time ago so everything is slightly antiquated in terms of the terminology, the patter and uh, all that but I find that to be charming and engaging. I think that if you read a book like this it's going to give you the tools that you need, but it's going to force you to put some of the work into it to determine how you want to present these tricks. Oh, and did I say? It's imminently affordable. I think this one can be had for about 12 bucks. So again, if you're not ready to make the commitment on the entire Card College series, but you want to learn some card tricks, I think that this is a fantastic place to start to give you all the slights and tips that you need, as well as some tricks to move you along your way and get you bit by that performance bug. And now my first cheat, the artful mentalism of Bob Cassidy. If you don't know, Bob Cassidy was a mentalist who passed away a few years ago. He was well known within the mentalism community as being one of the best creators and performers of mentalism. He gave us such tricks as the modernization of fourth dimensional telepathy, he gave us the name and place routine. There are so many things that Bob Cassidy gave us. And this book is a compendium of a number of PDFs that he wrote on the subject of mentalism. The book was put out in 2004. And as previously mentioned, was put together based on some PDFs that Bob Cassidy had written. I didn't get this book in 2004 when it was originally published, but I did pick it up as one of my first true mentalism books. And I think that this book has had more of an impact on my mentalism than any other book in my collection. It is packed, I mean filled, with effects and presentations, um, techniques for billets, envelopes, coins, money, pens, you name it, this book has it and has a lot of it. It starts off by giving you his entire act the way he presents it, then walks you through how to perform that act. So right off the bat, you're gonna have an entire mentalism show that's divulged in this book. Now, why is this a cheat? It's a cheat because the book itself is out of print. It was published by H&R Books and it's been unavailable for quite some time or at the very least, you're going to be paying quite a bit in the secondary market to obtain a copy. If you can find a printed copy, I always prefer that book in my hands and I think that most of my viewers will too. But you can find a lot of this material as PDFs from library.com. And I'm going to put some links down below to give you most of what it takes to put together the book. Granted, it may be slightly pricier to put it together as PDFs, but I think that there is a tremendous amount of value to anyone considering becoming a working mentalist. A lot of his Theories are in here as well, so he gives you his principles about the web, which is really a framework for thinking about how mentalism should look and work. So for all these reasons and more, I think that your shelf would be absolutely incomplete without the artful mentalism of Bob Cassidy. From here, my cheating only gets worse. I'm sorry. Uh, the next book is Harry Lorraine, The Classic Collection, Volume 1. I'm not necessarily recommending that you pick up The Classic Collection, Volume 1, because it's it is out of print. It's going to be harder to find. There's still some new copies out there, so you can find it. I also understand that Harry Lorraine himself has put this out as a PDF. So again, I'm cheating a little bit, but because I really think that this is essential to your understanding of good impromptu card magic. So what is the Classic Collection? It is an accumulation of several of Harry Lorraine's previous books which are close-up card magic, personal secrets, my favorite card tricks, and dexterity. Now, if you're only going to pick up one of these and you're not really ready to plunk down the money for the entire PDF of this book, I think that the piece that I recommend the most is close-up card magic. The classic work from 1963 that I think changed the way we look at card magic forever. He takes you through the necessary slights up front in close-up card magic on the Hindu shuffle, the jog shuffle, etc. I don't think that it's possible for me to enumerate everything that is in this book, and even just the close-up card magic piece has his take on, 
out of this world, which he calls out of this universe. He has uh, stop tricks. He has ace tricks. He has um, the lazy man's card trick, which is one of my favorite tricks to perform. And it's just a great book. So I recommend that even if you can't find the hardbound copy, which is great, it's one of the more beautiful books with its um, black leather or faux leather, faux leather covering and the silver engraved lettering. I think it's a gorgeous book. There's lots of pictures in here of his hands performing, black and white photos of his hands and the cards performing. And there's just so much to choose from, so you really can't go wrong. So another book that's black with some engraved lettering. This one is Strong Magic by Darwin Ortiz. So, so far some people have said, wait, no, no Ortiz? Well, here you go for all of the Darwin Ortiz fans out there. Strong Magic is Darwin Ortiz's classic work on making your magic better. So this is not a book of tricks, although uh, there may be some things revealed in here. It's more talking about the kind of thinking you should put into your magic and how do we make magic stronger, obviously, strong magic by the title. It's more than just that. He talks about how to shape your magic, how to structure your magic, how to deal with hecklers. There's so much in this book and you may not agree with everything that he says in the book, but I think that you need to read it and decide whether or not you agree. It's like the rules, right? The rules are there and you make the decision whether you're going to break the rules or not, but you need to understand them first. And that's where I put this book is that Darwin Ortiz has obviously put a lot of thought and energy and really good information in this book. And I think it's worth it for every magician to evaluate his considerations and decide, do they agree? I think regardless of where you end up, whether you agree with them or not, your magic will be stronger for having read and considered what he has to say. This next one is, um, I'm gonna recommend that you pick up one of these. To me, it doesn't really matter which one, but I am talking about the books by Mike Caveney, Classic Correspondence from Egyptian Hall Museum. Right now, there are three of these, and I happen to have all three beautiful books, and I did a review of these. I think that most people are looking for tricks, though, because you guys didn't really watch that video, and I think that that is, you're underserving yourself if you haven't watched about these books and picked them up. There are no tricks in these books. Now, there are some secrets revealed because of uh, what he's talking about, but it's not here to teach you tricks. What it is here to do is to teach you about the history of magic, and that's why I recommend it, because I think that you, we, we all have enough tricks, and if you followed along and you've purchased or looked at most of the books, that I've given you through foot four, then you know you have enough magic to last a lifetime. You don't really need any more tricks even if you stopped watching this video. But what I think we do need is we need to realize the importance of the history and understanding the people who've gone before us, understanding what their process was, what kind of things they went through, the things that we can learn from them, and these are the type of books that can help you with that, to walk in the shoes of magicians who've gone before us and understand what this art is really about. I'm a big fan of the posters and the pictures and the old time correspondence, and so maybe it's just my history geek, my inner history geek coming out, but I think that these books definitely have a place on your shelf if you're serious about the art of magic and want to understand the history. I think this is one of the easiest ways to get your dose of history. So. I'm not recommending that you pick up all three, although I think that would be a totally worthwhile investment. I'm really only recommending one of the three you choose because they are in no particular order. Uh, they, do, they are sequential in terms of his numbering of the letters, but you're not going to miss anything by picking up the third one if you haven't read the first one. So you decide what you can get, but certainly try to get them before they go out of print. So another cheat here in my five foot shelf I'm talking about Di Vernon and the essential Di Vernon. We all know that Di Vernon was the professor and love him or hate him, I don't know many people that hate him, he completely changed close-up magic forever. I think that the title speaks for itself, Essential Di Vernon. I think that everyone needs to at least have read Di Vernon and understand his thoughts behind 
making natural magic and especially natural close-up magic. Now, this book is a little bit of a cheat because it's like I talked about before. You can't really get this book physically by itself. However, you still can get the PDF from the L&L EPUB website, or if you're interested in picking up some of the individual books within this book, you can get those from library.com. In this book, you have the Die Vernon Book of Magic, Inner Secrets of Card Magic, More Inner Secrets of Card Magic, Further Inner Secrets of Card Magic, which is known as the uh, Inner Card Trilogy, for obvious reasons, Die Vernon's Ultimate Secrets of Card Magic, his tribute to Nate Leipzig, Malini and his magic, and the Symphony of the Rings, which is his version of the Chinese linking rings. So it's not everything he's ever published. That would be probably way bigger than you could comfortably hold. This book itself is almost more than you can comfortably hold. But it is 1,100 pages of some of the most superlative close-up card magic, and there are some other types of magic that you can find. So I recommend that you read Die Vernon and understand his thoughts and the, the gifts that he has given us. In here you'll find the original Twisting the Aces, Daily's Last Card Trick, and so many more. Shifting gears slightly, I think that there's not enough known or talked about on the subject of the business aspect of show business in magic, and for that reason, I recommend How to Make Money by Magic by Paul Daniels. This book was published a few years ago by Mayor Yedid and um, is pretty great in terms of talking about how to take your magic, not just from performing tricks and knowing how to entertain. A lot of the other books that I've talked about cover that, but this is more on the business side of things, that how are you going to turn this into a commercial effort? Frankly speaking, I don't think that there could be a better expert on the subject of commercial magic than Paul Daniels. He was well known throughout England as a performer and magician, had his own TV show and specials and things like that, hosted a number of game shows, but first and foremost, he was always a magician. And he understood what it takes to entertain an audience. So in here, he's sharing with you, and Andrew Locke has taken some of this material and put it together from Paul Daniels and some other sources. There's some controversy about this book. I'll let you look that up. This book, will help you understand what it's going to take to put together a show, have material, deal with crowds, and um, you know, get yourself out there making money. So I highly recommend this if you don't know much about it. And there are tricks in here, so you're going to learn some magic as well, but most of it is going to be focused on how to make money from your performances. Last, but certainly not least, is my favorite set of books in all of magic. Yes, I'm talking about Ted Anneman's The Jinx set. I was fortunate enough to find hardcover books of all three of the Jinx from one to 151. These books are amazing. Ted Anneman was such an enigmatic character and a prolific creator and writer of magic. In my opinion, most of modern magic owes a great deal of debt to Ted Anneman, and we lost him way too soon. I think it's only fitting that I finish off this fifth foot of my five foot segment with someone I consider to be one of the greatest magicians of all time, certainly creators and writers of magic, and that's Ted Anneman. Sadly, these beautiful books are no longer available as a hardback. There are a couple of places to find, I think, two of the volumes in softback. So you're probably saying, how can you recommend this if it's not available? Well, it is available, but it's going to be as a PDF. The beauty of this is that the PDF is eminently affordable. I believe it's $20, and it includes all of the Jinx in a searchable format. In my opinion, there is no better deal than these books on PDF, searchable PDF, for $20. I know I already recommended Practical Mental Effects, which is supposed to be the best of that was published posthumously after Anneman's passing, but these books will give you all of the originals, the gossip columns, the 
cocktail recipes, the reviews of other people's shows that are going to be missing from Practical Mental. Practical Mental stripped a few of people's favorite tricks and threw them into a book. This is going to give you all of the culture and layout from the 30s and 40s when these books, this periodical was published as a labor of love. And it's going to give you so much more than what you can find just from the tricks themselves. Totally recommend this. Well, that's it for my five foot shelf of magic. I really hope you've enjoyed this journey. I know I have walking back through all of these treasures and sharing them with you. And I think that if you consider these, you don't need to buy all of them. But if you consider them and decide what might help you in your journey, you're going to be well on your way to being a wonderful practicing magician. Certainly, if there's anything I can do to help you along that journey, please reach out to me. I am an open book. Thank you so much for liking this channel, for subscribing, and for watching. When you guys comment on these videos and let me know what you like or the things that you're interested in or that this is helping you, it really inspires me to keep making them. So I truly appreciate it and hope that you're getting value out of it. If you are, please press that like button, subscribe so that you don't miss any of our content in the future. I look forward to doing this for a long time to come. Until next time, keep reading.